Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Oxford Barkston textile jacket. Oxford describe this as their jacket for urban riders who want a blend of practicality and protection, as well as subtle looks that fit into normal life, not just life on a bike. I can see why they say that, as I think the Barkston D2D jacket delivers all those things pretty well. It's got good practicality from a waterproof membrane that's laminated to the outer shell. It's flexible for comfort and the styling hits that heritage spot that's been so popular for a good few years now. That outer to this jacket is made from nylon, which makes sure you don't get the shiny finish that polyester tends to give. And then there are color matched reinforcement panels at the shoulders and the elbows, which bring extra crash protection. The overall safety rating for this jacket is AA, which is the middle of three levels. You might expect a jacket for urban riding to only be approved to single A. After all, that single A level is only there for people who ride in towns and cities. But this jacket gets a higher rating, which in my book can only be a good thing. The membrane that's laminated to the back of it is Oxford's dry to dry membrane and it's rated to a 5,000mm static head. Now that for me is where the urban limitations for this jacket do start to come in. A 5,000mm static head is relatively low and for long journeys in rain I would personally prefer something a little bit more protective than that. The benefit of having it like that is that the membrane is thin which maintains very impressive flexibility and comfort from this jacket. It's actually quite hard to tell there's a waterproof membrane in there at all. If you're relatively new to biking, having the membrane laminated to the outer shell means the outer shell is better able to shed water as you ride. If that membrane is a separate layer inside the jacket, then it protects you against water that penetrates through the outer shell. That can leave you with a soggy jacket that takes quite a while to dry out. When it's laminated, as this jacket is, then the membrane helps the jacket stay dry in the first place, and it will dry out quicker after it gets wet as well. That is handy for city riding and commuting, especially as it's never long really before you need to put your jacket back on and head out on the road again. The Barkston fastens with a central zip up the front that's protected by a two-part storm flap which secures over the top with press studs. If rain does happen to get past all of those and then finds its way through the teeth of the zip, then a secondary flap behind the zip gives another layer of protection. The collar fastens with a press stud and you can undo two extra press studs and fold that collar up to give some more protection on windy days. The cuffs close up with simple velcro flaps and I had room to get even a pair of winter gloves inside the sleeves. There are air vents on each side of the chest which are more effective in a laminated jacket like this because opening those separates the waterproof membrane and it allows air to flow through the jacket more freely. Fit adjustment with this jacket is limited to elasticated drawstrings at the bottom hem but the fit of this jacket is designed to be quite loose. As it's meant for urban riding, there's less chance of air getting inside the jacket when you're riding at town speeds and making the jacket billow up, which it might do if you're riding at higher speeds. External pocket provision is decent. There are three cargo style pockets with fold over closures that secure with press studs. If you use the zips at the sides of the lower cargo pockets, then that gives you somewhere to tuck your hands to keep them warm when you're off the bike. Moving to the inside of this jacket, the first layer we see is the thermal liner. It's got a 100 GSM filling, which gives pretty decent protection against chill. The front section of that extends past the zip as well, which isn't normally the case with all thermal layers. I wore this jacket for an hour's ride in about 13 degrees with just a thin base layer underneath and I was perfectly comfortable. There's a pocket in that liner, but it's only held shut by some loose elastic, so I wouldn't be personally keen to trust it with anything particularly valuable. The thermal layer comes out of the jacket by undoing two zips and seven press studs and then we get to the mesh liner which is where we find the armour. Shoulder and elbow armour is standard and it meets the basic level one of the CE standard. It's type B armour which shows it protects more of the body than type A armour but I wouldn't personally get too carried away about that as the armour doesn't seem particularly large to me. There's no back protector as standard with this jacket, which might disappoint some people, but it's not expensive to fit an Oxford insert into the pocket that's in the jacket. As we record this, a basic level one back protector is £22, and it's £30 if you want the more protective level two insert. While we're inside, let's just show the CE label and that middle ranking AA approval that I was talking about earlier. There's another pocket in this layer, like the one in the thermal liner, it's just held in place with light elastic, so I wouldn't keep anything valuable or vulnerable in there personally. Finally, there's a short connection zip to attach this jacket either to a pair of Oxford textile trousers of your choice or to their connection belt. One of those lets you zip this jacket to your choice of denim riding jeans, no matter which brand they're made by. 
On the whole, I think this is a good riding jacket. In some ways, it's better than an urban jacket as it's got a higher protection rating than I'd expect. But then in other ways, I can understand completely why it's described as an urban jacket because the priority is styling and comfort. The waterproof membrane is less protective than in a regular touring jacket, but that means it's more supple and more flexible for comfort. The lack of fit adjustment makes it harder to cinch the jacket in to stop it flapping in the wind at higher speeds, but it's not really designed to be worn at higher speeds. If what you're after is a jacket that's mostly for use on shorter journeys, not long journeys at speed and not long journeys in the wet, then I think the Barkston jacket offers a very good blend of style and performance. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Oxford Barkston jacket, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.